Hey guys, Derek here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are reacting to another episode of The Haunting of Bly Manor. Last episode blew my mind, so I had to take a little bit of time. Uh, this is season one or just episode six. Uh, it's called The Jolly Corner. So what happened last time on The Haunting of Bly Manor, you ask? I shall tell you. Uh, <laughs> um, last time was pretty much all focused on like Hannah. And she's just like tripping through her own memories and the house's memories. And, and uh, you know, at one point um, she went into Rebecca Jessel's memory and is just like, we, we find out just like a lot of things. <laughs> uh, we find out how Peter Quint died. We don't yet find out how Rebecca died, uh, but I'm sure we will learn about that. We find out, um, how Miles pretty much is possessed by Peter, uh, which is not good. Uh, we learn that, you know, they, the kids saw Peter die, uh, and that's a bummer. Um, what else did we learn? Oh, we learned Hannah had a husband named Sam who like left her for another woman. And then the most important thing that we uh, realized was that Hannah is dead and has been the whole time like are other people dead are more like are more members of people we've seen dead i hope owen's not dead that would suck um or jamie if jamie no jamie i think is the girl in the future um so i don't think she's dead now also the there's a guy at the beginning of the episode or in episode one who was like an indian man is that supposed to be rahul in the future or owen in the future <laughs> That would be cool. Um, yeah, but it, it blew our mind. Like Hannah literally died like five minutes before Danny gets to the place. And the reason that she was like able to be seen the whole time is because she refused to believe that she was dead. Like, like similar to when um, Peter could pick up the doll because he didn't quite know what was happening. But now that he's dead, like no one can see him unless he's being like spooky ghosty style. Um, but now are people gonna be able to see Hannah? Like, is she still gonna be present to them or what's the deal? I don't know, man. Um, before we jump into this episode, please consider leaving a like on the video and please consider subscribing. That means so much to me. Uh, if you wanna see the full length reaction to this episode, head down to my Patreon, it's linked below. But otherwise, let's jump into it. That's a person standing there. Who'd that be? That's himself. Okay, so maybe he did do it for him, for the ghost. What? What is going on? Don't smile like that, you friggin' weirdo. <laughs> There's a weird look there. Is that Flora? Just chilling outside, eh? Doing your thing, girl. Are you confused about why you're in the woods? Or did you plan to be here? Cheers. Cheers. I'm not the best at coffee either. <laughs> she just sucks at making everything. I don't like the way we left it. And how did we leave it? Wrong. Uh, with her seeing a ghost? And, and, and I want to I want Gotta keep things proper boring, haven't we? <laughs> what a loser. Flora? She's gonna go walk into the lake. Oh, 
Oh, now we see the ghosts there. What? <laughs> hey, who you is, bro? Who are you? That's creepy. Do you hear me? If you don't have a face when you turn around, I'm gonna be mad. I'm... Okay, that's upsetting. Mommy, Why? Mommy. Why? Oh, this is the past. Oh, snap. Hello, Flora. Bruh, you just, you changing in front of the door like that? And they smashed. I feel like I should be littler. Well, you should be five years old, in fact. You were five years old when Oh, this is, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Why aren't I five years Changing old? memories. I was like, what? I'm not five years old. I'm eight years old. Why is my age all wrong? You know why, don't you? Because this is a memory. That's right. Yeah. Dang, she's That's very funny. intuitive. If she isn't, then why isn't she calling a bloody doctor? Because this is your family, dude. I'm sorry? He says he's a type of special mint, and that's all. And what? Big mint, oh. he says. My imagination. <laughs> well, God dang it. you can tell your daddy you think we'd sneak in. Okay, so he's aware well that the spooky version of himself is there. The calls are spooking them. You know it. Is he the one calling? Does he not want to accept that his brother's dead, or does he not want to accept that his brother's wife is dead? Who is she? That's the real conundrum. Hey, oh, bruh, little boy, who you is? So whenever that thing opens, it's the little the little boy playing with it. Uh, we have things handled here. Yes. Any nightmares, bogeymen, or monsters under the bed will be dealt with swiftly and fairly in an impartial court. <laughs> is Owen gonna notice that she just like disappears, or or is he gonna like remember it? Where are we going? Or is she gonna not disappear because she's with Owen? Is this like a metaphor for your relationship? That's a lot of work for a flower that only blooms once. It's what people feel like to me. Yeah. Exhausted I'm a effort. genius. <laughs> Very little show for it. I'm just a kid. Kids can't raise kids. You forget things. I watch never a pot when it boils. Got myself into all sorts of trouble there. Dang, she's had a kind of a rough life. Dang, she's doing a good good job here. Everyone is exhaustive. Even the best ones. Sometimes it's in the blue goddamn moon, I guess. Someone like this moonflower just might be worth the effort. I know you're struggling. And it all breaks down and rises back up and breaks down again and every living thing grows out of every dying thing. This is a long I monologue, like dang. to take our place. That life refreshes and recycles and on and on it goes. And that is so much better than that life getting crushed deep down in the dirt. Is this also what happens with the house? When they all die, they just get recycled, and on and on they go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that was a deep monologue. 
didn't realize it was going straight to kissing, but you know, maybe I'm just dumb. <laughs> a ghost is gonna pick a flower. A ghost is gonna pick a flower. No, never mind. Oh my. It's like the, from the first season with the bent neck lady. Sounds good. Darling, look what your brother's brought. It's terrific. Does the husband know? Or is it at least suspicious? I don't remember much. It's your childbirth. He's thinking about what happened nine months before and how he wasn't home. <laughs> she was so early. Oh, she wasn't actually early. She was. Right. I was so surprised. She was perfectly on time. She was nearly as small. Because the flora is the uncle's. Oh. God dang, man. <laughs> Math didn't work, did it? Conceived in August. While I was in Russia. Six years. God, that sucks nice for him. Math. Do you love him? Bro, that sucks for him. That sucks so much. Was that from her accident? <laughs> Dang, she doesn't mind looking in the mirror. Yo, what is up with these children? <laughs> Cause ghosts. Don't, don't touch her forehead again. I'm terribly sorry for the trouble. I was just going to walk. I didn't mean to alarm you. Okay, so Rebecca possessed her. Well, listen, and this is the important part. She's my daughter. In every way that matters. When she skins her knee, calls out with a nightmare, it's me. First time some asshole breaks her heart, I'll be there to console her. And when she asks her father to walk her down the aisle, me, not you. You understand me? You're banished, little brother. Banished from my house. You're banished from my wife, my children. Banished. You don't have a brother anymore. Grotesque little demon, isn't he? I pity you. Because you have to live with him. You have to live with yourself. Maybe that's why he never wants to answer the phone call, talk to these kids, go there, is because he's like, after his brother died, he's like adhering to this banishment that he gave him as like a way of honoring him, possibly. What are you doing? It's all right. Hey. They're just eating some food. You already ate in your room. I made you see. It was some of my best work. I don't remember that. I don't like this game. It's okay. I don't like it. Oh, that's probably your uncle. Everything's gonna be okay, Flora. Don't don't worry. Hello? Hello? It's not her. I mean, it is him calling, but he just doesn't want to say anything. I should have told you. 
Yeah. Yeah, you probably should have. Again, yeah. <laughs> you probably should have done a lot differently. India. I love you, Charlotte. Yeah, she loves you too, but bruh. I know. Alright, Han Solo. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Cheating is not good. I think he should be allowed to see his daughter. Because it is his, but you know... Other than that, I think he was um, rightfully banished from their lives. What sort of an accident? You're wrong. <clears throat> You're mistaken. He realizes he truly is alone with himself. That wasn't the worst of it. Not even arranging their funerals or burying those empty coffins. No. Hell was having to call Bly. Having to break the news. And having her voice be the first one you heard when she picked up the phone. Dang. Her little voice. Flora Residence. Saying, Yo, that's gotta... Oh, that's heavy. That's gotta suck. What? I'm going to Bly. That's insane. Bruh. It's a three-hour drive, and you've been drinking all... Well, two years, really. So you'll go to Bly, then. They'll be so happy to see you. And maybe you can tell those little kids to their faces exactly how their parents died. And you can tell them why they were taking that trip in the first place. Oh, that's an extra layer of guilt. I didn't even think about that. They were taking the trip in the first place because of him. <laughs> the little boy flips her over. <laughs> He's got to be on top of things. You can have this one. Try this. The fact that that just came off like that is insane. No, don't. That, that face sucks. <laughs> I prefer him without a face. I'm tired of being tucked away. I'm tired of forgetting things. And I'm tired of acting strange. Don't do that. You mustn't keep doing it. Are they... Is Miles and... Or is, uh, is Peter and Rebecca... Possessing these two so that they can hang out together? Bruh. Come here. Oh, hot okay. damn. She sees her. Miles? Miles? Is she finally going to see all the ghosts? This is awkward. Bruh. Are they gonna try and lead her to another ghost that's gonna try and kill her in the attic? Come on. Sorry. Oh, Miles. Ah, uh, well, Peter actually. Ah, oh, the end of the episode. Freaking a. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. So there was a lot to unpack here. <laughs> um, oh man, it's so hard to like go from front to back in this thing. So we learned that um, some important things. We learned that Flora is Henry's daughter, the uncle's daughter, um, because he and Charlotte, the wife, were having an affair because uh, Dominic, the husband Dominic, is out of town a lot. I don't know what he does for a job. I'm just going to pretend that they are, um, uh, well, one of them's a lawyer, right? So I'm going to pretend that the other one is a uh, possibly also a lawyer. 
Uh, they're probably both lawyers. Um, and they're out of town. He's out of town a lot. So the other two started canoodling together. And sh shenanigans ensued and complicated things arose. Um, they fell for each other. Uh, and, you know, I don't even know how to, like, talk about it. So, the husband starts realizing that something's wrong. Like, his brother's calling the house looking for his wife at, at random times. You know, he's he's bringing this kid a, a, a dollhouse and, and he, he confronts the wife. And she's, you know, she can't really deny it. Yeah, she can't really deny it. She's got to, like, essentially come clean and be like, yeah, this kid isn't yours, which is also a weird parallel to, to Jamie's story. Um, being like, this kid isn't yours. But in where Jamie's mom bailed and left, um, uh, Charlotte stayed to try and fix things. And it uh, didn't end well for her. Uh, <laughs> because she is like, yo, all right, husband Dido, we are going to go to India and try and fix this marriage, retrace our honeymoon because things are obviously not how they should be going. Um, you know, the husband banishes the brother. He's like, dude, you're, you know, you can have this office. You're still a practicing lawyer or whatever. He can't take that away. But he's like, we are no longer working together. You don't get to come to my house. You don't get to see my wife. You don't get to see my kids. You get nothing. You know, when I die, um, if, if like his entire line died, so like his, him and his kids or whatever, like the money and all the house would go to Henry, but you know, really it's, it's the kids money now. Uh, but he's like, yeah, you're, you're out of our lives forever. Like you're just, you're stuck here with yourself. Like that's what you get. Just this evil vindictive version of yourself to hang out with. And, uh, then they go on this trip and they die. And then that's when he, he meets this evil vindictive version of himself. Um, because he's like literally all alone. Like the love of his life is gone. He can't talk to his kids. I mean, he probably could, but like, I feel like he's self-imposing that these restrictions on himself still because of what his brother said to him. Like, if his brother, the last thing his brother said to him is like, you're banished completely. I feel like he would have an even deeper sense of guilt if he just like ignored that. Or he'd feel even worse if he ignored that. So he's kind of like being like, okay, I will impose these restrictions upon myself. I'm not going to talk to these kids. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do anything. Um, and then he just hangs out with this bad version of himself Oh, maybe he'll uh, save Danny because the ghosts just attacked her. Interesting. Um, yeah, so he's he's getting put through memories and and freaking Flora is getting put through memories. And she, you know, that's partly how we learn about the mom and, and the uncle cheating. And we meet this sketchy little boy who has no face. Um, and it's just like, oh, there's so many things going down like the three major things were the developments with Danny and Jamie Flora's memories and the uncle's memories um yeah so so Flora keeps getting um she keeps getting put in memories and and they're not sure what's going down um and that that makes sense a scene earlier in in episode two uh, maybe episode three, I think it was episode two, um, where Flora's just staring at the lake, not doing anything, and they're concerned, and then you see Rebecca on the other side of the lake, that must have been a situation where Rebecca was controlling her, um, so it seems maybe, like, Rebecca and Peter keep controlling these kids, because then they can actually, like, hang out, or, or something, I don't know, um, like, I don't know what their master plan is here, but then, you know, Rebecca is present at the end talking to Flora and Danny sees her and then she sees Peter and it's like, ooh, Ako Taco, bro. Uh, but yeah, friggin', um, before we talk about the end, let's talk about, uh, 
Danny and Jamie. So she's trying to like fix things early on uh, by making her crappy coffee and being like, I'm sorry that I keep seeing this ghost. You know, I've finally come to terms with ditching him now um, when she burned his glasses. So she's like, all right, I, I want to start something positive. You know, I want this to be a thing. Jamie's a little apprehensive at first, um, being like, all right, I don't know if this is a thing, but then, you know, she's, she's optimistic about it and she takes her to see this flower and delivers this long moving monologue about her life and how people have constantly disappointed her and her life has sucked. And, you know, most people, including herself, she believes are not worth the effort, but then she, I I think says like you are like one of these flowers you are you're worth the effort so she's telling Danny like you know I'm willing to I'm willing to put in the effort with you to make this a thing and it was it was nice it was cute um and it, it was a weird like she was talking about the flowers almost like an interesting parallel to the people that live at the house of you know, they live, they die, and they're, you know, they're recycled, and the, it just keeps going. It's like a cyclical thing, because, you know, Hannah died, uh, Rebecca died, Peter died, and they all, they're all just going through their own memories again, and it's just, it's very weird, but it's, it's, it's nice, and it's, like, this isn't a very spooky show. It's just, like, it's, ha it's haunting, you know, the haunting of Bly Manor, but in a deeper sense like emotionally haunting, I guess. Um, but yeah, these, these, they're just possessing each other. All the, the, they're just possessing these kids and it's freaking messed up. And Flora keeps getting put in these memories and she's like, I don't like this. I want to live my life. Rebecca, stop doing this to me. She re like, she realizes it's Rebecca. I don't know if Miles realizes that it's Peter doing that to him. Um, but she's like sick and tired of it. She's like, stop. You know, I'm trying to talk to you. Quit putting me in these things. And Rebecca's like, it's fine. You're like, you're okay. I don't know like what Peter and Rebecca's like end game is here. Like, are they trying to continue? Like, cause they seem to be like able to be physically there or like present in the house when when they're not possessing them. So it's not like they need to possess them to like continue their relationship. Um, and if they did, that's creepy because the, their brother and sister, like, ugh, don't use those two to do that. Um, so I don't know what necessarily their end game is here. Uh, but then Danny comes in and just sees Rebecca. Like Rebecca doesn't disappear. She's just like, Oh, hello. <laughs> it's like, ah, like, guess you have to die now. <laughs> uh, yeah, she, uh, she, um, you know, Peter is out there. Probably had already possessed Miles in a way. I don't know. Maybe. <sighs> Freaking it. It's so confusing. Um, but yeah, she takes her out into the hallway, sees Peter, and then leads they possess the kids lead her up to the attic and knock her unconscious at least and then that's the end of the episode were they trying to kill her there like what like i i mean don't tell me obviously but i don't understand what their end game is in this situation like what are they trying to accomplish are they just trying to be ghosts like what like what's the deal here man <laughs> i don't get it uh either way um this was a good episode. Like just the more we learn about all the different backstories and like what went down between which characters and how that's influencing things now and, and small little scenes that we saw in previous episodes where like, that's weird. And we're kind of like getting that info now. I really like it. Um, I don't know if I like this show as much as, as the haunting of Hill house, just cause it's not as traditionally like spooky um, but I still enjoy it. I think it's, I think it's a really moving show and it's very, very nice. I like it a lot still, but yeah, I don't know. I, there's three episodes left after this one. So, um, they're starting to ramp things up, I guess, maybe. I don't know. 
Yeah, so uh it this it seems like this this episode with how it ended almost could have been like a second to last episode, but there's three episodes left, so I don't I wonder what I wonder what's gonna happen. Like what the big end game of this show is gonna be. I don't know. I I look forward to seeing it though. Um, I think those are all my thoughts uh, I have on this episode. Let me know what you thought down below. Um, if you liked what you saw, please leave a like on the video. Please subscribe if you want to see more. And again, if you want to see the full-length reaction to this, head down to my Patreon linked below. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.